Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today, well, I'm going to try to answer some questions. I get tons of questions every week. Uh, a lot of it's about the machine, a lot of it's just about the process, uh, some of it's just about the finishing, just a little bit of everything. So, the very first question I'm going to address Have you noticed on YouTube that recently another little button's pointed, popped up that says join? And I don't know if it pops up on all channels because I haven't gone through the process yet of setting that up. What that is, is basically, I don't know how to put it best. It's not a subscription. It's a deal where you donate money. Now, I don't know, I don't know how much. I know there's different levels. But anyway, what it comes down to is what they're wanting to do is for people that join that and pay to this, I don't know. I don't know what, even how the money is distributed on it. I hadn't figured that out yet. Basically, you pay to do this. Say it's five dollars a month, and the outcome of that would be you'd get to see other footage of like outtakes or much like this one here. If I was going to do user questions and I was wanting to do them more often, that's where I'd put them. That way, people would go look. I haven't set this up yet. And I'm not going to say I never will. I just don't know how I feel about it because I, I like the idea that it's free and that nobody has to pay to watch this stuff. And I definitely don't think I'm good enough in front of the camera to be paid for it. <laughs> so that's what that is. It's a deal where it, you can try to, it's actually more leaning towards your supporting the channel and helping them along. And, you know, I just don't know. I haven't messed with it. So that's going to be question number one. I've been asked two or three times about it, and I just really don't have a good answer for you on that yet. I just haven't set it up yet, and I don't know if I ever will. Okay, so my next question is, when I'll occasionally mention that I'll just run that through the planer and get that leveled out. And so I've got somebody asking what I'm talking about running it through a planer. Okay, so I've got a 13-inch thickness planer. It's a DeWalt. It's right back there over my left shoulder. It's that yellow thing back there. I'll walk over there here in a minute and show it to you. So what that does, so this is the cedar I've been using. This is rough cut cedar. It's from a mill. If you can see it, it's got a lot of rough surface. So for example, the last video I shot, before I cut on it, it makes the surface nice and smooth. And you can see the difference in it. Okay, so what this does, uh, I can lower this handle down. It'll lower some blades inside here that are 13 inches long. And you just lower it very small amounts, like, you know, 1 16th, maybe 1 32nd of an inch. And so I'll feed the piece of wood in there, and it will pull it through, and it will just take off a fine layer off the top. Sometimes I have to run this thing through three, four, five times until I get it to the smoothness I want. Okay, so for the next one, I get asked this one all the time. Do I pre-treat the wood before I paint? And is that how I'm getting away with all the, all the overspray and sanding it off? <sighs> sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, i found that some woods, you really don't have to treat it too much. Some you do. Uh, oak, I would recommend treating before you try painting and sanding. And when I do treat it, a lot of times I just use simple spray polyurethane. It does a pretty good job. You saw on this last one, I was trying something that somebody had mentioned that after you cut, go ahead and spray, and it works pretty good. Well, this one, it worked really well, but there is some mess ups down here in the writing. But I mean, it kept everything real clear. It wasn't real hard to get the paint off. And I was using some fine grit on this. So, you know, that may be a process I tend to do from now on. After I cut it, I may go ahead and spray it and just see how that goes. Uh, the other one I use is sanding sealer. I was going to get it out, but the, it's a gallon can and it's really heavy and it's pretty full. And I foresaw myself making a mess. And it's just a gallon can of stuff set called sanding sealer. And it works pretty much the same way. It just seals the top of the surface. And after I paint, then I can sand off just the sanding sealer and the paint. What I have found with the sanding sealer, if you apply it too thickly, you are going to go through the disc on your sander because you will gum those things up in no time. And I, the first couple of times I used it, I just thought I'd made a huge mistake. So I've learned you gotta put a real thin coat on with the sanding sealer. Okay, so now I'm over in the CNC shop. I'm gonna answer a few questions over here. 
Uh, first off the bat, ask all the time. Almost every video I get asked one question. What type of paint? It's called Createx paint. And I mean, all of them, that's all I've used. And the only place I have got this is uh, Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you can order it online. And I'm not 100% certain. I may have a link to it on uh, down below my videos. It's a good paint. I don't know. I can't have anything to compare it to. Because I've had several people tell me to use different brands because they work much better. They have better coating. They aerosol better. Okay. I, the reason I use this, I have got a place to go pick this up. When I run out, I don't have to order it. I can run to Hobby Lobby in a town about 25 minutes to the northeast of me, or I can run about 25 minutes to the south of me, and there's another Hobby Lobby. So that's the reason that I use Createx paint. While we're on this one, this is the Iwata Revolution Airbrush. I've got two of them. This is the only ones I've had. Uh, reasoning behind airbrush over spray paint, it atomizes the paint better. You can put a much thinner layer of paint on your project. And you also can be a lot more accurate because if you're just using a regular old rattle can, it just fans out. And y'all seen me a few times when I've really taken my time and really tried to stay inside of the letters and the graphics. That's something that I'm really worried about uh, sanding on. <sighs> Clearly I wasn't on the last one because I sprayed right over the letters and took some letters off, but it happens. So those are the only two airbrushes I've ever had. Uh, again, I can't compare them to anything else. From what I've read, Iwata is top of the line. Okay, the next one's still on the airbrush stuff. Uh, the other big question I always get asked is what do I use to clean my airbrushes? This is all season formula, windshield wiper washer fluid. It's washing fluid. Bought it at Walmart. It was like, I don't know, 275 for this big old jug. And this is the first jug I've ever had of it. I'm just about to the end of it, but I read somewhere that that's the best stuff to clean it with. And it's basically got many of the same uh, chemicals and stuff that the cleaner actually uses. And I've never had a problem with it. It's cleaned those guns up great. And so whenever I have one that I'm using all the time, I've got another one in a little jar that I've got. And I fill it completely full of this stuff and just let it soak for a little while. And that way I'm sure all the little crevices get the paint out and it comes out nice and clean. Okay, so the next one. Uh, people hear me talking about the Z-slide on my CNC, and what I'm talking about is this. This here, this piece of aluminum all the way down to here, and you can see that right there where the, the spindle mounts to it. From right here out is the spindle. All of that came with the spindle. Here to the back right there, that is the slide. You can see there's a ball screw inside. Ran by a uh, stepper motor I put up top. You can see where I mounted it, made my own brackets to mount it. And what that does is allow it to move up and down. That is a piece that I ordered. I did not build the Z-slide. I'm sure with enough, enough work, I could have done it. But that little piece cost a little over a hundred bucks. The amount of time it would take me to build that, oh, it had been tons. And I am certain that that thing is precise. Because I mean, it's a great product, it is put together well, and I do have links for it. If that is something you're looking for, I definitely recommend it. Okay, so this last question here, I've been asked several times before, and I've mentioned and I've explained it to you, but uh, I'll gladly go over it again. They're wanting to know what my deck is made of, my tabletop. So I'm going to run through it real fast. Okay, so right down here is a quarter inch sheet of plywood with two before frame. This two before frame is actually a box. It has a couple of runners across the middle to support all the weight. Right above that, I have a three quarter inch sheet of plywood. It's just uh, rough out plywood. It's not cabinet grade. On top of that is MDF, medium density fiberboard. I've cut them in six inch strips and put spaces after every six inches of three quarters an inch right up here where we can see them good. And so right here where my clamps are, you can see in there, I've got some T-Track. 
T-Track simply allows these clamps to slide back and forth. Now, am I going to say this is the best way? There may be better ways of doing the clamping with your wood. Uh, the biggest problem I have with these is when you get a lot of sawdust buildup, it will stop that. And I mean, it makes it where you almost can't move that thing at all. And you have to stop what you're doing, break out the vacuum and your brushes and get the tracks all cleaned out so you can continue on. I mean, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, keeping your table clean probably is a better idea than what you usually see in mine because you can always see sawdust built up on mine. I just kind of feel like it's a machine in use. It makes sawdust. So be it. So that's going to be all the questions I'm going to answer today. I'm uh, clearly back over in my wood shop. Uh, on that membership deal, that join membership thing, I don't know, really understand how it all works. Uh, y'all speak up, let me know. I mean, if it's something y'all want to see me do, I probably have enough uh, every week, every two weeks to put out one extra video of just outtake junk. Stuff that I've messed up. Granted, there's going to be a portion of it that's going to have no sound because, yeah, I smash fingers, bang elbows, drop stuff on my feet, and I don't say, oh, golly, usually. You know, I'm alone out here in my shop, so <laughs> sometimes the words aren't that great. Oh, and I, I lied to you. I'm going to answer one more question. I do get asked from time to time when I'm getting my wife on the channel. Well, I don't know. She's not real crazy about being in front of the camera. Uh, I have snuck her in and basically, you know, showed her over my shoulder or have her in the background somewhere. <laughs> She's just not super crazy about being on here doing this stuff, which is fine. It's not for everybody. But, you know, I'm sure if I ask her and got ahead of project I needed help with, I'd probably get her out here to help me. But, and, and we may see if I can do that at some point. But right now, I really don't have a good answer for that one. Right now, I'm going to say, it'll be a bit. So you guys don't be shy. Uh, down in the comments, ask me questions. Tell me what you want to know. Tell me what you want to see. I mean, that's even easier. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to ask for 3D stuff. If I do 3D stuff, I'm going to keep it fairly small. Because real large 3D projects, I, I've done one before that took three hours to cut. And... You remember the wavy American flag. That took over three hours, and I cut that video down to, I don't know, 15, 18 minutes. I don't even remember how long it was. I cut out a ton of that video just so I could fit it in and make it where it was watchable. Because, I mean, who on earth could sit and watch YouTube for three straight hours on the same thing, especially watching the machine? So you guys just let me know kind of what you're after. I am going to continue to do some of these halftones. I haven't got my next one just completely set up yet, but... Uh, I will be doing more of those in the future. And of course, I'm going to be filling my orders because, I mean, that's kind of a must. I get them every week, uh, every other day, pretty much. So I'll fill the ones that I feel like would be interesting enough to show because there is some stuff that is pretty bland and I rarely ever show that stuff just because I'm, you don't want to see the same thing over and over. And I got to be honest, I don't like doing the same thing over and over, but... It's part of it because it's like Wahoo boards. They, they're they slow to me. They're boring, but I make them all the time. People love them. It's a game from their past, so I'll make them. So, guys, that's going to be it for this one. If y'all hadn't done so yet, run over and check me out at Smokey Uncuffed. Uh, I have a podcast. I've got a website with the same name, and I have a YouTube channel, so you can check it out any way you want. And please don't forget to come over here and sub this channel and hit the, I never do tell people this stuff, so I'm going to once. Hit the like button, sub, hit the notification bell, all that stuff. Whatever. I won't ever be surprised saying that stuff again. You guys will do it if you want to. So guys, that's it for this week. If y'all haven't done so yet, please subscribe and I'll see y'all next time.